where m is the Mach number, u is the local flow velocity with respect to the boundaries, and c is the speed of sound in the medium. The local speed of sound, and thereby the Mach number, depends on the condition of the surrounding medium, in particular the temperature and pressure. The Mach number is primarily used to determine the approximation with which a flow can be treated as an incompressible flow. The medium can be a gas or a liquid. The boundary can be traveling in the medium, or it can be stationary while the medium flows along it, or they can both be moving, with different velocities. What matters is their relative velocity with respect to each other. The boundary can be the boundary of an object immersed in the medium, or of a channel such as a nozzle, diffuses or wind tunnels schnelling the medium. As the Mach number is defined as the ratio of two speeds, it is a dimensionless number. If m less than 0.2 minus 0.3 in the flow is quasi-steady and isothermal, compressibility effects will be small and a simplified incompressible flow equations can be used. The Mach number is named after Austrian physicist and philosopher Ernst Mach, a designation proposed by aeronautical engineer Jacob Ackerit. As the Mach number is a dimensionless quantity rather than a unit of measure, with Mach, the number comes after the unit. The second Mach number is Mach 2, instead of 2 Mach. This is somewhat reminiscent of the early modern ocean sounding unit Mach, which was also unit first, and may have influenced the use of the term Mach. In the decade preceding faster than sound human flight, aeronautical engineers referred to the speed of sound as Mach number, never Mach 1. Overview At standard sea level conditions, the speed of sound is 340.3 meters per second in the Earth's atmosphere. The speed represented by Mach 1 is not a constant, for example, it is mostly dependent on temperature. Since the speed of sound increases as the ambient temperature increases, the actual speed of an object traveling at Mach 1 will depend on the temperature of the fluid through which the object is passing. Mach number is useful because the fluid behaves in a similar manner at a given Mach number, regardless of other variables. So, an aircraft traveling at Mach 1 at 20 degrees Celsius at sea level will experience shock waves just like an aircraft traveling at Mach 1 at 11,000 meters altitude at minus 50 degrees Celsius. Even though the second aircraft is only traveling 86% as fast as the first classification of Mach regimes, while the terms subsonic and supersonic in the purest sense refer to speeds below and above the local speed of sound respectively. Aerodynamicists often use the same terms to talk about particular ranges of Mach values. This occurs because of the presence of a transonic regime around m equals 1 where approximations of the Navier-Stokes equations used for subsonic design actually no longer apply. The simplest explanation is that the flow locally begins to exceed m equals 1 even though the free stream Mach number is below this value. Meanwhile, the supersonic regime is usually used to talk about the set of Mach numbers for which linearized theory may be used, where for example the flow is not chemically reacting, and where heat transfer between air and vehicle may be reasonably neglected in calculations. In the following table, the regimes or ranges of Mach values are referred to, and not the pure meanings of the words subsonic and supersonic. Generally, NASA defines hi hypersonic as any Mach number from 10 to 25, and re-entry speeds as anything greater than Mach 25. Aircraft operating in this regime include the Space Shuttle and various space planes in development. High-speed flow around objects. Flight can be roughly classified in six categories. For comparison, the required speed for low Earth orbit is approximately 7.5 km per second equals Mach 25.4 in air at high altitudes. The speed of light in a vacuum corresponds to a Mach number of approximately 880,991.09. At transonic speeds, the flow field around the object includes both sub- and supersonic parts. 
The transonic period begins when first zones of M greater than 1 flow appear around the object. In case of an airfoil, this typically happens above the wing. Supersonic flow can decelerate back to subsonic only in a normal shock. This typically happens before the trailing edge. As the speed increases, the zone of M greater than 1 flow increases towards both leading and trailing edges. As M equals 1 is reached and passed, the normal shock reaches the trailing edge and becomes a weak oblique shock. The flow decelerates over the shock, but remains supersonic. A normal shock is created ahead of the object, and the only subsonic zone in the flow field is a small area around the object's leading edge. Fig. 1. Mach number in transonic airflow around an airfoil, m less than 1 and m greater than 1. When an aircraft exceeds Mach 1, a large pressure difference is created just in front of the aircraft. This abrupt pressure difference, called a shock wave, spreads backward and outward from the aircraft in a cone shape. It is this shock wave that causes the sonic boom heard as a fast-moving aircraft travels overhead. A person inside the aircraft will not hear this. The higher the speed, the more narrow the cone, up just over m equals 1 it is howardly a cone at all, but closer to a slightly concave plane. At fully supersonic speed, the shock wave starts to take its cone shape and flow is either completely supersonic, or only a very small subsonic flow area remains between the object's nose and the shock wave it creates ahead of itself. As the Mach number increases, so does the strength of the shock wave and the Mach cone becomes increasingly narrow. As the fluid flow crosses the shock wave, its speed is reduced and temperature, pressure, and density increase. The stronger the shock, the greater the changes. At high enough Mach numbers the temperature increases so much over the shock that ionization and dissociation of gas molecules behind the shock wave begin. Such flows are called hypersonic. It is clear that any object traveling at hypersonic speeds will likewise be exposed to the same extreme temperatures as the gas behind the nose shock, wave, and hence choice of heat-resistant materials becomes important. High speed flow in a channel. As a flow in a channel becomes supersonic, one significant change takes place. The conservation of mass flow rate leads one to expect that contracting the flow channel would increase the flow speed and at subsonic speeds this holds true. However, once the flow becomes supersonic, the relationship of flow area and speed is reversed. Expanding the channel actually increases the speed. The obvious result is that in order to accelerate a flow to supersonic, one needs a convergent divergent nozzle, where the converging section accelerates the flow to sonic speeds, and the diverging section continues the acceleration. Such nozzles are called de Laval nozzles and in extreme cases they are able to reach hypersonic speeds at 20 degrees Celsius. An aircraft Mach meter or electronic flight information system can display Mach number derived from stagnation pressure and static pressure. Calculation The Mach number at which an aircraft is flying can be calculated by where M is the Mach number U is velocity of the moving aircraft and C is the speed of sound at the given altitude. Note that the dynamic pressure can be found as Assuming air to be an ideal gas, the formula to compute Mach number in a subsonic compressible flow is derived from Bernoulli's equation for M less than 1, where QC is impact pressure and P is static pressure is the ratio of specific heat of a gas at a constant pressure to heat at a constant volume. The formula to compute Mach number in a supersonic compressible flow is derived from the Rayleigh supersonic Pitot equation. Calculating Mach number from Pitot tube pressure at altitude, for reasons explained, Mach number is a function of temperature. Aircraft flight instruments, however, operate using pressure differential to compute Mach number, not temperature. The assumption is that a particular pressure represents a particular altitude and, therefore, a standard temperature. Aircraft flight instruments need to operate this way because the stagnation pressure sensed by a pitot tube is dependent on altitude as well as speed. 
assuming air to be an ideal gas, the formula to compute Mach number in a subsonic compressible flow is found from Bernoulli's equation for m less than 1. The formula to compute Mach number in a supersonic compressible flow can be found from the Rayleigh supersonic Pitot equation using parameters for air, where Qc is the dynamic pressure measured behind a normal shock as can be seen, m appears on both sides of the equation. The easiest method to solve the supersonic M calculation is to enter both the subsonic and supersonic equations into a computer spreadsheet such as Microsoft Excel, OpenOffice.org Calc, or some equivalent program to solve it numerically. It is first determined whether M is indeed greater than 1.0 by calculating M from the subsonic equation. If M is greater than 1.0 at that point, then the value of M from the subsonic equation is used as the initial condition in the supersonic equation. Then a simple iteration of the supersonic equation is performed, each time using the last computed value of M, until M converges to a value, usually in just a few iterations. Alternatively, Newton's method can also be used.